This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a comedy, drama, and horror film called Deadly Detention. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In a dark hall, a mysterious person taps metal bars with a bloodied item while a woman runs for her life. She enters a room to escape, but soon, a bloody hand slams against the door's glass panel. Three hours earlier, five students ride the school bus on the way to detention. Lexi smiles at Barrett, who is taking a selfie while Kevin quietly decorates his Bible. In the front, Jessica listens to her music. Officer Pete, the driver, glances at the shrine he made Made for his daughter, but gets distracted when Taylor skates across the bus. Soon, the school bus arrives at an abandoned prison, where the students are welcomed by the principal, Miss Presley. She instructs Pete to bring them to the holding room while she leaves to prepare. Lexi suggestively asks Pete to cuff her, but the officer simply motions for her to follow the others. Pete takes them to the holding area while Presley grimaces at the dirty office she's forced to use. She sets up her desk and wipes it down before settling her items. As the last piece, she reveals her her best principal trophy and wipes it clean. At the same time, Kevin also cleans his table. Suddenly, Lexi sits next to him, asking what his story is. When he doesn't answer, she turns her attention to his Bible, which Kevin shares that he decorated himself. Seeing Presley carrying a box, Jessica opens the door for her. The principal welcomes them to Saturday detention and explains that school fumigation is ongoing due to rabid possum infestation. Because of this, the district office assigned detention to New Way Prison. She stresses that no talking or leaving their seats is allowed without her permission. Also, to help troubled teens amidst the death of their classmate, Jenny Duke, the students are ordered to write an essay about themselves. Presley confiscates their cell phones, but Lexi forces the woman to pull her phone from her chest. Barrett asks to keep his phone since it tracks his sugar level, but Presley tosses him a piece of candy and takes his phone away. After the principal leaves, only Jessica and Kevin work on their essay. Lexi recognizes that Taylor never talks, so she yells to her ear to ask if she's deaf. Jessica reminds her that the deaf cannot hear her. Presley reads an adult novel in her office, then curiously checks Barrett's phone and swipes through his selfies. Meanwhile, Lexi turns her attention to Barrett and asks what he's drawing. Instead of her, Barrett shows the poster he's drawing to Jessica. Lexi teases that Jessica is Barrett's jealous girlfriend, so he's not allowed to talk to her. Lexi sarcastically tells Jessica not to worry, because even though Barrett sees what she has, it doesn't mean he'll be getting some. Barrett tells Jessica to ignore Lexi because she just wants attention. Lexi then steals Barrett's drawing, announcing that it's a poster for a drinking party. She asks what school spirit types like Jessica do for fun, but hints that she probably doesn't drink because she's training for the Olympics. Tired of her snarky remarks, Barrett tells Lexi that her mouth is beautiful when closed, but she hints that it can do cool things when it's open. Lexi turns back to Taylor, who's napping. Despite Jessica's and Barrett's advice to leave her alone, Lexi continues taunting Taylor. However, when she tries to take her shades, Taylor suddenly grabs Lexi's hand. Hearing the commotion, Presley stops looking through Barrett's selfies and gets up but bangs her knee on the table. Taylor and Lexi snap out of fighting when the principal enters the room. Lexi pretends to be stretching, but Presley isn't convinced and gives her another Saturday detention. She threatens everyone with another detention if more trouble sparks. When she leaves, Jessica snaps at Lexi for dragging them into her troubles. Still, Lexi decides to have more fun, so she heads to Presley's office to steal money and the principal's trophy. She returns to the detention hall, waving the trophy like a sword. When Jessica spots Presley returning, Lexi suddenly hands her the trophy, forcing Jessica to hide it. Knowing that something is off, Presley questions the students, but no one confesses to anything. Unconvinced, Presley turns her rage at Lexi, whom she threatens to drag outside and pull out her piercings. This seems to quiet down Lexi, but fortunately, Presley leaves to answer a call. Later, the students are awoken by Presley screaming. She bangs the door from the locked hallway, so Barrett tells Kevin to open it, but Kevin is too scared. Finally, Presley's screams turn to horror, and her bloody hand slams on the glass panel. Everyone springs into action, but they're unable to open the door. Blood spills from under the door, so Jessica urges the others to help save Presley. However, Lexi insists on keeping the danger away from them. Fed up with Lexi's selfishness, Jessica confronts her and starts a fight. Their scuffle is cut short when Taylor yells at them, revealing that she can speak. She's trying to call on the payphone, but even when Kevin checks it, the line is dead. Jessica insists on finding a way out, but as soon as she steps toward the door, it slams shut. Suddenly, a voice echoes from the speakers. Convinced that it's a ghost, Taylor holds on to Kevin, but Jessica insists that it's only a nuthead. Lexi asks the voice what it wants and where Presley is, but the voice insists he's the new principal. 
Suddenly, the doors open. Deciding that escaping is the only option, the students head out, but not before Lexi takes the trophy with her. Instead of Presley, they find a bloody trail outside the hallway. Kevin refuses to follow the trail, but the other side suddenly closes, leaving them no choice. Barrett points out that the killer may be leading them to a trap, but Lexi wields the trophy and assures him that she has it covered. They follow the bloody trail into Presley's office, but their cell phones are no longer in the box. The group continues down Block 7, where Taylor declares that the place is haunted. Kevin tries to calm the others with a Bible passage, but Taylor insists that one prisoner was left behind in solitary confinement when they closed the prison, and the ghost continues to haunt the place. However, Lexi is convinced that Presley is pranking them to freak them out, and Jessica admits that it's possible. They continue into a dark hallway, but all doors are locked. Suddenly, one door opens for them, so they carefully walk inside. Despite thinking that it's a setup, they continue into the prison kitchen. From the speakers, the voice teases them about surviving the deadly detention. Lexi dares a person to come out but gets no response. Jessica then announces defeat, promising the principal to be good. Still, they get no response. The others start checking out the place, and when Kevin opens a large pot, Taylor pops out, scaring him. Meanwhile, Lexi enters the walk-in freezer, holding the trophy like a sword. She spots a shadow behind a curtain and screams upon seeing Presley's body. Jessica and Taylor grab the body and set it down, checking for a pulse. Kevin and Barrett start arguing about how to check for a pulse properly, so Taylor tells them to do it themselves. The boys politely refuse. Suddenly, the voice tells them to stay away from the body, but Kevin insists on saying a few words for Presley. Everyone turns to Lexi, urging her to do it because she knew the principal best. In her impromptu eulogy, Lexi admits to hating the principal and fantasizing about her dying. However, now that it has become a reality, Lexi finds it gross, so she apologizes to Presley. As everyone leaves, Lexi sets the trophy next to the body to avoid getting haunted by Presley's ghost. When they regroup in the kitchen, they hear another door opening. Thinking it's a trap, Barrett heads to a different door instead. When he touches the knob, Barrett starts screaming, worrying the girls. However, he laughs, pissing off Jessica and Lexi. Jessica punches him in the gut in revenge. Angered at the reaction, Barrett goes for the door again. This time, he starts shaking quietly. The others ignore him until sparks erupt from the knob. Jessica and Taylor rush to help, but Kevin warns them that they'd get electrocuted too if they touch him. Instead, Kevin uses the trash can beside Barrett to push him off the door. When Jessica can't wake Barrett, Lexi suggests kissing him, but Kevin argues that just works in fairy tales. Lexi insists that Barrett might reflexively kiss back, so Jessica tells her to do it instead. Taking the opportunity, Lexi kisses Barrett and gets into the mood. Soon, Barrett starts moaning and wakes up. He thanks her for reviving him, and Lexi teasingly says it was her pleasure. Jessica gets impatient and breaks them up, reminding them of their situation. Lexi challenges their captor to show themselves, but Taylor scolds her for taunting the ghost. The students get into an argument if it's a ghost or not until Jessica rounds up everyone for a huddle, getting between Lexi and Barrett to avoid distractions. Jessica urges them to focus on escaping. As if leading a sports team, Jessica stresses that they must keep their eyes on the prize. She tries to end the huddle with a team hand stack, but everyone walks away. Despite this, Jessica pushes them to grab a weapon to protect themselves before leading them to the next room. While inching away with their backs to the wall, Lexi asks what put Kevin in detention since he doesn't seem to be a rule breaker. He tells him he was accused of making a Jesus graffiti on the school gym when the glitter spray paint was found in his locker. Kevin insists that he didn't do it, and Barrett shares that the school found a vodka bottle in his locker, even though it wasn't the brand he likes. Jessica adds that she was accused of destroying the volleyball net but insists that she didn't do it. Taylor then shares that she punched someone who insulted her, though she proudly says that she wasn't falsely accused. As they walk into a dark hallway, they hear a sound from above. When they look, they find someone rushing forward from above. The figure climbs down to block their path, so the students run away into an open room. However, they find gas filling the room from the opposite door, so Jessica tries to cover it. Meanwhile, Lexi climbs up the ceiling, and the others follow as the room fills with smoke. While climbing the ceiling pipes, Taylor's shoe gets stuck. She pries her shoe from the pipes when a spike punches through the ceiling. Surprised, Barrett falls off, bringing down Lexi with him. Kevin also falls, so Jessica grabs him. However, his weight is too much, causing Jessica to fall as well. The spike punches closer towards Taylor, so she backs up, unable to move from her spot. 
Moments later, Kevin and Jessica wake up in a cell hallway, while Lexi and Barrett find themselves in the prison cafeteria. Jessica and Kevin wake up, but Kevin has sprained his ankle. Footsteps and clinking metal approach them, so the two hurry away. Meanwhile, Barrett reveals a flask he's been hiding. Lexi quickly takes it and shares the drink with him. She starts to wonder about dying, so Barrett asks what her dying wish is. Lexi wishes that she'll be wasted when she dies. Finding themselves alone, the two look into each other's eyes, and Barrett again asks what she wishes. Lexi says she wants to be happy, which Barrett passively agrees to. She asks him what makes him unhappy when he has everything. Barrett agrees since he's rich and attractive, while Lexi starts kissing him. The two get intimate while Kevin and Jessica continue running for their lives. Soon, they reach an office area, and Jessica kicks the door to the visiting room but finds that the next door is still locked. After getting intimate, Barrett notices Lexi's necklace, but she tells him to disregard it. Jessica paces around, denying that she's scared because it'll make her weak. She blames herself for leading them to a dead end, punching the wall in frustration which leads her to hurting her knuckles. Kevin comforts her, but Jessica tells him to ignore her wounds since they're about to die. Despite this, Kevin holds on to hope, urging her to show her emotions. Jessica breaks down, noting that she hasn't made her father proud yet, so she can't die. Kevin reminds her that she has won trophies and medals, so she doesn't have to prove that she's the best. This uplifts Jessica's mood, so she thanks Kevin with a hug. Soon, the killer walks into the visiting room but finds it empty. After he leaves, Kevin and Jessica hop off the corner table where they hid and make their escape. However, Kevin's ankle still prevents him from running, so he tries to hide instead. Realizing he's not following her, Jessica runs back in search of him. When she can't find him, she continues moving forward. Meanwhile, Kevin trudges through another hallway and senses the killer behind him. He stops, gathering his courage before turning around. Finally, Jessica finds Barrett and Lexi, but stops when she notices Lexi's kiss marks all over Barrett's face. Before she can scold them, the voice comes up from the speakers, directing them to return to the holding area. Jessica scolds them for bumping uglies while they're still in danger, blaming them for Kevin's possible demise. Lexi stresses that she just intends to die with no regrets. Barrett comments that there are no mirrors around, and Jessica mocks his vanity. Barrett defends that everyone has their own thing, like Jessica being an athlete. When he calls out Lexi's promiscuity, however, she slaps him. Finding a common enemy, the two women walk out, leaving Barrett alone. Immediately, he checks himself from a glass pane and sees someone standing behind him. Thinking it's Jessica, he makes a half-baked apology, but the figure smashes his head against the glass. Hearing this, the women rush back and find Barrett dead with a ruined face. Determined to find the killer, the women grab kitchen utensils to fight back. When they get closer to the area, the voice taunts them for being the survivors. Silently, they continue down the hallway when a hooded man appears at the guard post. The two carefully peek inside, where they see a shrine for Jenny Dukes. Soon, the hooded man exits the post, and the ladies take turns hitting him. Lexi gets knocked out while Jessica tries fighting back. After knocking her down, the man holds Jessica and triggers the cell doors to close. Jessica fights for her life, but the cell door slams against her skull. Next, the man grabs Lexi's hair and brings her into the guard post. He removes his hoodie, revealing himself as Officer Pete. Lexi expresses her disappointment that the hall cop is the killer, then grabs a fire extinguisher to attack him, but he quickly throws it off her hands. Pete berates her for calling him a hall cop, noting how the students ignore him when he sees everything. He reveals that he snuck 50 possums into the school and framed them to get detention, leading them all to the prison where they're helpless. To prove so, he dares her to scream into the microphone, so she calls out to Jessica, but he reveals that Jessica and the others are dead. Finally showing fear, Lexi begs for her life but still calls him Hall Cop because she doesn't know his name. He assumes that she doesn't even know that he has a daughter, leading Lexi to realize that he's Jenny's father. Pete mourns for his daughter, who brought laughter to his life and sang to him at night. As Pete reminisces about Jenny, Lexi's face fills with rage. He recounts that he told Jenny not to say that he's her father to avoid bullying, but she got bullied anyway. However, Lexi argues that Jenny had friends, and she never hurt her. Still, Pete is convinced that Jenny was bullied into killing herself. Lexi kicks the officer and tries to escape, but he catches her and strangles her until she shows him her necklace. Recognizing Jenny's photo from her locket, Pete backs away. Lexi reveals that Jenny was her best friend who always tried to cover her bruises. Jenny shared with her that her father had a temper problem, and Pete snaps at her for turning his daughter against him. Lexi argues that she can't do that because Jenny killed herself to escape her abusive father. Angered, Pete strangles Lexi again, forcing her to shut up. 
Suddenly, the principal's trophy appears behind him, and Presley slams it against his head. Lexi freaks out, thinking that Presley is a zombie. However, Presley convinces her that she's alive, stressing that she doesn't go down that easily. After convincing her that she's human, Presley gets Lexi back on her feet. Lexi asks what they'll do with Pete, and Presley decides to leave him there for someone else to pick up. On their way out, Presley recounts that she checked the other students' pulses and found that they're banged up but still alive. With danger out of the way, Lexi is back to mocking the principal's fashion sense, while Presley threatens the flirty student with a trip to the ER. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.